everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to revisit a little surprising result from a natural dyeing technique that I did probably about a year ago. Today we are going to try to dye some yarn with yellow onion skins, but we're going to try dip dyeing to see if we can get sort of a gradient of color. What I observed the first time I tried this technique is that it seemed like all of the pigment absorbed onto our yarn which surprised and delighted me. A lot of times with natural dyes, the pigment absorbs fairly slowly, and while you might have some tonal variation, uh, a lot of times it doesn't all absorb and you end up with something semi-solid. But this, this seemed like maybe we might be able to see, I don't know if we'll get like a full dip dye, but we'll try and see what can happen. Today's video is sponsored by Suzanne. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. We are going to dye 100 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. I've found that Superwash blends like this will absorb more pigment than their non-Superwash counterparts when it comes to natural dyeing. But in general, with natural dyeing videos, I tend to go for non-superwash just because, I don't know, if I'm dyeing with natural colors, it feels more appropriate to use non-treated wool. But uh, I think that we could get some cool results and anything that will help the pigments absorb a little faster, I think is ultimately gonna be a win. If you would like to learn more about how to sponsor an episode of Dye Punt Weekly, uh, you can find a link to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop in the video description and up in the iCard. If sponsorship slots are currently sold out, don't despair, they will be coming back. Um, but in the meantime, my Etsy shop is filled with hundreds of skeins of hand-dyed yarn featured in these videos, and so all of it is a great way to support the channel. So in addition to sort of my little my little grocery basket with some onions where I'll harvest some of those skins. I have been saving up over the last year. As I use onions, I let the skins dry out and sort of just saving them in this uh, cleaned out nuts container. So I'll weigh how much onion skins I have. Now, if you don't want to save up material over a long period of time, and I haven't tried this, but in theory, you could go to, say, the supermarket and ask if you could have just a bunch of onion skins at the bottom of the bin in the produce aisle. And I have a feeling that they would potentially say, sure, but I'm sure that you could maybe even buy the skins per pound at the same price as onions if they looked at you strangely. Uh, but anyway, let's see how much we have and start extracting some color from these skins. Whoa, Suzanne, there were a lot of onion skins packed into that container. We have almost 75 grams of onion skins. I transferred the onions to the stock pot and let's start with adding eight cups of water. In theory, our total volume of liquid to yarn does matter um, to an extent. It matters because the more concentrated we have the pigment, the um, faster that it can sort of absorb to the fiber and sort of give us a repeating gradient kind of effect on the yarn. But eight cups of water is definitely not enough here today, so I'm gonna add another eight cups. With 16 cups of water in the pot, we have enough space to move the onions around. I think that, um, in theory, I would be okay just adding enough water so that everything is nicely covered, uh, but given that we're trying something specific, I wanna keep track of the water and materials that I'm using so that way we know how to adjust and modify this technique in the future. And now we need to heat things up and wait. I want to heat the skins for at least an hour and with the size of the pot it'll take a while for things to heat up uh, but uh, I'm gonna come back in an hour and we'll evaluate where we are at that point. While we wait to extract that color I am gonna pre-soak our sock yarn. I've added on a new reusable nylon zip tie to help keep things ordered and I'm pre-soaking in plain tap water for I guess it'll probably be about an hour. If you'd like to learn more about the yarn or the zip ties or some of my dedicated dye equipment that I use in other videos you can find the links to everything in the video description. I know I said I'd be back in an hour but it's been about 30 minutes and we're finally at a boil and I'm not sure if you guys can really tell but I can see there is a lot, a lot of pigment in here. 
already, which is awesome. So I'm gonna let things go another, I think, 45 minutes, and then we'll try to strain out the uh, skins. Okay, after about an hour and 15 minutes total from when we first started heating this up, I think I am ready to remove as much of the onion matter as I can. Just look at this beautiful, warm color that we have. I am going to start by just honestly lifting up sections of these onion skins and placing these aside. It's possible if I were to change the water I could extract more pigment from these skins, but I think that I've got, goodness, there's a lot more onion skins in here than there was the very first time I tried it. I think I looked back, there was only 15 grams the very first time I did it, so I am optimistic for some fun coloration. There is more liquid here in the pot than um, I could, I think, dump into another container, but I am gonna do my best to strain out as much of the skins as I can. There is likely still some vegetable matter in here, but again, this color is stunning, and I'm really excited to dip dye our yarn. Natural dyes can be pH sensitive, and I did add acid last time. I'm not sure if it's necessary, but I wanna go ahead and do that again. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, I think three tablespoons, approximately, of white vinegar here to our pot and stir things up. My tap water runs slightly acidic. Yeah, I don't think that's really altered the color very much, but maybe if we really shift it basic or something, we might have seen a color change. But anyway, I am excited, and this smells very like chicken soup-y. Well, I mean, it is an onion broth after all. Okay, Suzanne, let's start dip dyeing your yarn. Da -da -da. I mean, this color is beautiful. I have no idea how quickly or not it might absorb. I do have some tongs on hand. I feel like I need them and that spoon so I can check for color clearing. But this, like if all this color sticks around, we've got a gorgeous burnt orange that is beautiful um, and it does look like with each dip things are getting lighter and lighter I don't know if color is actually exhausting but there's no question that we've got sort of an ombre happening at least right now I do want to get some pigment on our lightest area. Again, I'm not sure if it's clearing and oh, I don't even have the heat on. It's still hot <laughs> because I didn't really let it sit very long and which is why I didn't notice that there was no heat. Okay, let's add that last section in so we at least get some color coverage on the end. But this right now is beautiful. Um, again, we had about 75 grams of onion skins, which was a packed, I'm not sure how big that nut container is, but it was a lot. And we did start with 16 cups of water, but there's definitely water left in like those onion skins we removed. And I'm not putting that end in again, but I am trying to move things around a lot. So if this does not work in the way that I have envisioned, what I think I would try next time is doing some actual resist points on the yarn, um, because that definitely worked. Around where the ties were, we had white left behind, which is not something I always see with natural dyes, just because a lot of the color, um, does end up take like it ends up very pigmented and the color just has time to move. Okay, I'd say we are definitely seeing some like there's a difference now. The color is getting less red and more yellow, 
with what is in the pan. I'm definitely going to want to give the yarn plenty of time in here. But there's no question that something, even in just this, I don't know if I've been dipping this whole three minutes that this clip has been going, but something is happening and something is working. And it is really easy to pick off when I see those onion pieces. So I'm not worried about that. And every once in a while, I just go in with that other end and you can see I accidentally shifted it and I can move that back. This is one reason why I really, really, really like having um, these zip ties on the yarn. It makes it easy to hold because otherwise without the zip tie, if I put it all in, it would be hard to get back out. Um, I'm almost comfortable putting the whole thing in and leaving it in. The thing that's giving me hesitation is that right now there is no question that we've got sort of this gradient, this ombre. We've got this darker burnt orange and this lighter almost peach color at the other end. Sometimes if I go all the way in before the color is completely set, um, then you might see so I'm like, mm, I guess it kind of counts as bleeding across the yarn. So it's just something to keep in mind and a reason why I'm just slowly, slowly doing this. But, you know, we're more yellow. I wonder if that yellow is not the pigment that we'll see absorb. Uh, probably what I'm going to do is for another couple of minutes, we'll just keep dipping like this to try to keep this ombre going on. But I'll say, as soon as I saw that yellow onions almost clear in the dye bath last time, I knew this was something I really, really wanted to try. Um, and this color is spectacular, especially for a non-mordant <laughs> situation. There is no mordant. I don't consider acid or vinegar to be a mordant. Um, that really just changes the pH. It's not adding a metal ion that is helping the color bind stronger or a little more concentrated or shifting the hue like those metal ions can do. Whoop. Okay, so I think the yellow color might be starting to clear and even if even if we lose some of this difference between the ends, we know right now that we did achieve this. So maybe um, if this doesn't work and we end up with some different color around that lightest end, what we could do next time is when we get to this space, then we can put the yarn in a steamer basket and steam it to make sure all that pigment is set well. But honestly, this, this worked great. And, I mean, maybe this is something we should look at with tea again as well. Tea dyeing works pretty well, but I wonder if you could dip dye and sort of get that smooth color. I mean, this means if this worked, you can get a beautiful gradient on a sock blank or something like that with ease with these onions. And, I mean, I shed zero tears in kind of collecting these onion skins, right? So anyway, uh, I'm going to let things sit for 10 minutes and we'll come back and check in. Okay, after 10 minutes, I definitely still see good color variation between the lightest and darkest edges. I am keeping the heat on low, and I will let this go ahead and be at this light simmer for another 20 minutes for good measure. We want this color to be very well set, but I will say I am thrilled, thrilled with this color we've achieved so far. All right, it's been those 20 minutes. I'm now going to turn off the heat entirely. And oh, you can see that the nylon has picked up. Maybe, maybe it's hard for you guys to see on camera. The nylon has definitely picked up some color. And there's no question that we still have our light and dark ends. That is great. Let's see if the color changed. Yeah, actually, maybe. Like, it looks fairly clear on the monitor, but I definitely do see some pale, like almost butter yellow color left in there. I think if I pick this up, you might, eh, it's hard to see at the bottom of the pot. But anyway, the heat is now off and I'm going to leave the yarn in here to cool completely. 
I know that we're going to have a fair amount of rinsing. I expect there will be a lot of yellow color, whether it's as pale as this or a little darker that comes out of the yarn when we wash it. But we will come back and do that once the yarn has completely cooled. The yarn has cooled off a lot here in the dye bath. And honestly, a lot of the color has cleared. This is less yellow than what I saw before. So now I'm going to carefully just remove this from the dye bath. We actually we did remove most of the skins. And it's fairly subtle in places. Oh, those poor skins. Um, but we do have a dip dyed yarn here. Let's go wash it. The yarn actually doesn't smell too much like a chicken soup, but it does definitely smell a bit oniony. Um, I am so far just sort of placing it into one of our pre-soak water, and you can see there is a hint of color in there, in addition to some onion. So we will have some rinsing ahead of us, but if my past experience is anything to count on, and now I'm adding just some clear dish soap, we should get a lot of pigment left in our yarn. But we definitely want all of the pigment that is not bound to the yarn to come out. And given the depth of color that we have right here, that small amount of bleeding that we see is not a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep rinsing this. Um, letting it soak and rinse so that we can remove as much of that color as possible. And then I'm gonna place the yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we can come back and see these beautiful toads that we created with some yellow onion skins. Here is the finished dried yarn that we dyed with onion skins. I am thrilled, thrilled with this level of pigmentation. This is amazing. The color that we got in this reusable nylon zip tie is closer to what I see with a lot of natural dyes with no mordant, a slight wash of color. But on this superwash yarn that is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, we've got a deep burnt orange color that is spectacular. Suzanne, I hope you're gonna really love it. The ombre is subtle, but there is absolutely a difference between the color on the two ends. If you wanted to amplify these differences, you could dip dye even slower. And as I said previously, there is great potential for doing various gradients and resist techniques on this yarn using onion skins. Not all natural dyes can give you this level of pigmentation and will absorb in a way that dip dyeing will really work to give you a noticeable result. It really does depend on the type of colored pigment that you are extracting. Mordants like alum or iron mordants, which I do recommend using with dedicated dye equipment that you don't use for food, uh, they do, they can shift the pigment a little bit, or in some cases they can even intensify the color. And again, it really varies on the pigment and the molecules that you are extracting for this process. How color fast is this color? I expect the color will hold up really, really well through washing. Will it fade over time? That I'm not as sure about. I expect the pigment would last, will last a really long time with the onions. That is the sense I have here, and I haven't heard about it being a fugitive dye or one that you can use to add pigment to fiber, but then over time the pigment will sort of degrade, it'll break down in a way that you'll, it'll fade without even being left in direct sunlight. I don't think that that will happen in this case though. But again, I'm not a natural dyeing expert. I am merely a enthusiastic novice excited to explore more. I would like to give another huge thank you and shout out to this video sponsored Suzanne. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. And oh, I, I'm just, I'm ecstatic about these results. What other oniony techniques would you like to see me play with? Let me know in the video description if you want to see me play with this on a sock blank, where honestly we could get some probably cool model and resist from just the stitches, or other resist techniques. And 
I mean, I'm going to start saving up yellow onion skins again. So, yeah, I know I want to play with it more. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on by tapping on that bell icon so you don't miss a new video. I publish at least two new videos every week on Tuesday and Friday mornings, and you don't want to miss any of it because I'm always looking at different ways to apply color to yarn, and I'm not afraid to share my mistakes along with my successes. While you're at it, you can go ahead and give this video a like. <laughs> I have really come a long way on my yarn dyeing journey, and I am absolutely excited to explore natural dyes more in the future. If you want to see the dyes that I've tried both with and without mordants, um, I do have a playlist that I'll link in the video description and iCard, so that way you can catch up on the wins and results that I've had along the way. Uh, I hope to do some more natural dyeing as the weather outside warms up and I'm really excited. And let me know what other kinds of natural dyes you think I should explore in the comments. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Bye!